tripped on the pig. <laughs> Please be seated. <laughs> Good luck to everyone and welcome. Uh, we are gathered here today to witness and to celebrate the marriage of Lauren and Nathaniel. It's a beautiful spot for this occasion, isn't it? And it's great to see all of the friends and family that have gathered here. Now, I am compelled to ask, is there anyone here who believes that these two people should not be married? Let them speak now or forever hold their peace. We're armed. <laughs> anyone? Any reason whatsoever? Any tiny? We're good to go. It's okay. We're good to go. So, uh, now it's my turn to talk. I told them if they wanted me to officiate the, the wedding, then uh, they were going to have to listen to my speech. So I wrote a real long one just to keep you out here as long as possible. Arguably, the greatest play in dramatic literature is Hamlet, written by William Shakespeare. And in Act 1, Scene 3 of Hamlet, his best friend Laertes is going off to college, and his father, Polonius, is haranguing him with a boatload of fatherly and sage advice. Laertes, like most college students, listens very begrudgingly. Uh, I will play Polonius and uh, paraphrase his thoughts. He says, 
give thy thoughts no tongue and no suitable thought to act. Now, for those of you who don't know what Shakespeare, don't know how to speak Shakespeare, uh, that means please think before you speak. <laughs> Very wise. Be familiar, but not vulgar. In other words, be friendly, but uh, you don't have to please everyone. Those friends thou hast, grapple them to thy soul. Give every man thy ear, and few thy voice. Reserve thy judgment. What he means here is, listen more and speak less. Wonderful. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for a loan may lose itself and a friend, while borrowing blunts the edge of husbandry. Husbandry doesn't mean it's a science of managing a husband. Husbandry <laughs> is uh, be frugal and be thrifty in your financial matters. So also very good advice. And this, above all things, to thine own self be true, that thou canst be false to no man. Those of you who know me know that uh, there was a time in my life when that statement, to thine own self be true, would have baffled me because I had no idea who I was. There was no possible way for me to be true to myself because I had no foundation, I had no structure, I had no purpose. I don't feel that way about these two people. I'll tell you a story. One day, Dayton and I were blacksmithing at my house and uh, we completed our projects and uh, I went into the house and Nate went and got in his truck. I figured that was that. So about two minutes later, the doorbell rings and there's Nate standing there, all sheepish and chagrined. And he said, uh, Steve, I, I just backed over your lamp post and broke it off. <laughs> and I said, what are you talking about? It looks perfect. It's straight. It's standing right there. The lamp post is perfect. And he said, well, no, I, I tried to straighten it up so that I could see whether it could be fixed or not. And it just looks right. And I went out and sure enough, it was broken. And Nate said, absolutely, I will help you fix it. Or I will help you pay for it. Whatever you want to do, whatever's necessary, I'll make it right. So uh, I started thinking about it, and you know, back in the day, if that was me, and there was some way I could straighten up that lamppost and make it look like it was normal, <laughs> I'd have been gone. You'd never, you would just see the cloud of dust to be out the driveway, because I had no foundation. I didn't know who I was. You know, I would have told him, you know. Maybe there was an earthquake and nobody knew. It, it just happened. I don't know. It wasn't me. But Nate's not like that. He knows who he is. He knows how to be true to himself. A couple of years ago, Lauren was my teaching assistant at Fredonia. Nate was too, before her. And uh, Lauren was, was working with me. It was the end of the semester. The students were working on their final projects, and we have a big deal at the end of the semester. We bring in an adjudicator, we archive it for video with videos, and it's a, you know it's a very very important part of the students' grades, and uh, it's a lot of hard work to get them prepared. And of course, nobody works harder than Lauren does, and so she was always the first person there to get the students moving, get them going, to coach them, to help them, and of course, Lauren always got the weakest students to get a hold of, to try and raise them up and uh, get them ready for their adjudication. Well, I arrive the day and I go to the theater door and I, wait a minute, the door handle mm -hmm. is laying on the floor in front of the door. I, said, I, I tried my key and the, the locks were all wedged tight and crashed. I said, what the heck is going on? look over and Lauren's working really hard with a group of students <laughs> over there. So I go around back get in. She comes in, brings the students. She goes, it's, it's time, we're gonna, we need to get to work here. And I said, Lauren, I know that you were the first one here this morning because no one else will be here before you. Uh, when you got here, was the door handle broken off of the door? She looked at me and she goes, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, well, did you like to explain what happened? And she said, I was trying to get in. I was trying to let the people in. The people wanted to work. They needed space. They needed time. And it was just awful. I tried desperately. I couldn't get in. 
and uh, and I could tell if I pulled just a little harder, <laughs> the doors would pop open, and then we could get to work. But the handle popped off instead. <laughs> so, my point is, when I was their age, I would have never been able to stand up and face the music like that. I didn't know who I was. I had no idea who to be true to. Today, I have great faith that I know who I am because of the grace of God. Mm, amen. These two people, they know who they are through the same faith. Mm. And uh, they know how to be true to themselves. So I ask you today, my most fervent wish for you, for both of you, is to keep that, keep that being truthful to yourselves. Know who you are. Share your truths with each other. Be honest with each other and be gentle with each other. You can look forward to a life of peaceful and purposeful living. Good advice from the old man. <laughs> All right, that's enough out of me, but you know, you asked for it, so there you go. <laughs> All right, let's hear from these two now. They have some chosen some very important readings which will state the founding principles on which they'll build their life together. So please. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, we do. Look at that. I wonder who organized it like that. <laughs> I think good. We will not be guided or directed by fear. Our choices will be made with faith and hope. Ether 12.4 Wherefore, whoso believeth in God might with surety hope for a better world. Yea, even a place at the right hand of God, which hope cometh of faith, maketh an anchor to the souls of men, which would lead them sure and steadfast, always abounding in good works, being led to glorify God. When we have questions, we will ask. James 1.5 If any ye lack wisdom, let him ask of, of God, who giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. We will feast upon the scriptures daily. Second Nephi 25, 26. And we talk of Christ, we rejoice in Christ, we preach of Christ, we prophesy of Christ, and we write according to our prophecies that our children may know to what source they may look for a remission of their sins. We will be honest in all things. Luke 8, 15. But, but that... On the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. We will strive to have integrity. Proverbs 27. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. We will show compassion. Zechariah 7.9. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true, uh, uh, true judgment, and show mercy and compassion every, uh, uh, every man to his brother. And to the world we will bring love. Moroni 7, 46 and 47. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, if ye have not charity, ye are nothing, for charity never faileth. Wherefore, cleave unto charity, which is the greatest of all. For all things must fail, but charity is the pure love of Christ, and it endureth forever. And whoso is found possessed of it at the last day, it shall be well with him. Nice job. All right, Nathaniel and Lauren, I invite you to declare your sacred vows to one another. Nathaniel, you may go first. Uh, Nate, you know you don't deserve her. <laughs> <laughs> don't say it too loud. <laughs> this is still okay with you, no matter what kind of craziness. Right? You're okay, yes? Yeah. <laughs> All right. She's been warned, it's fair. Be strong, my children. <laughs> All right. So, like... I, I do, in general, in good fashion. Uh, you know, a, a good 
friend and mentor now, a counselor, at one time called me a wordsmith. Because I'm good with words, and I can make people think, and if given enough time, I can talk my way out of anything. <laughs> the problem is, it's time. If, you've heard, if, if I failed at that time, what's the problem? But today, I don't have any words written. I didn't write down a thing. Because I don't want to win them or, with, or win you with something I've already prepared, something that I think will sound nice and something that's true. I want it to just be now. And with everything that I have lost, everything that I've gained, everything that I've been through, I measure a lot of life by that. In this moment, I don't care about anything. Not a damn thing. Because what's happened before this moment brought me to this moment. And it doesn't matter so long as I'm here. Because I fully believe I, I have made the best decision I possibly can. And that is to love you. Because love is a choice that I made. And I swear to you that I will make it every single day. And I will strive to make you know it every day. Now, I will fail. Because I'm, I'm good at that. <laughs> but I will never let go or surrender. <coughs> I will be completely stubborn and bullheaded in the matter because I'm really good at that too. <laughs> the populace will sustain that. Yeah. I you. They don't have to. I said to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. With everything that I am, I love you. With everything that I have. How little I want you. <laughs> Nathaniel Gilbert Harris, you are a very persistent man. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone had told me four years ago <laughs> that we'd be standing here <laughs> getting married, I would have told them they were crazy. <laughs> and I probably would have hurt them for suggesting. <laughs> but clearly God had other plans. Um, we've had some really wonderful adventures together. And we've had some really hard, true trials. There have been moments where the, the trial and the heartache were so much I didn't know if we would make it out of it. But we did. Every time. And that would not have been able to happen without the two of us both striving, both trying. And I'm confident that we can make a lifetime out of that. And I want to. I, um, I think that when it comes to trying and, and uh, continuing to endure in that, you can out-stubborn me any day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's important, because I'm pretty stubborn. <laughs> uh, but I want to be stubborn with you for the rest of my life, for the rest of your life. Theoretically, hopefully, it's the same amount of time. <laughs> if not, we'll continue after. All right. Uh, we have the ring. Does the bear relinquish the ring? It was a fight. We got him. <laughs> Thanks, bear. Best <laughs> we'll ring bear ever. Nathaniel and Lauren, please join hands. Which hands? Both. Oh. Nathaniel, do you take Lauren?
to be your lawfully wedded wife? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, show him which one. I know things. Lauren, do you take Nathaniel to be your lawfully wedded husband? I'll take that. <laughs> now then, by the power that has been bestowed upon me by some damn fool from the state of New York, <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. Lauren, you may kiss the groom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. Nathaniel and Lauren Harris. Music! <laughs> <laughs> No! My country is a You can stand up, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, both uh, Nathaniel and Lauren hope that you will join them for a dinner and a reception in that pavilion over there, probably uh, starting in about a half an hour after they complete their photos. So let's say 7.30 in the pavilion, please.